Welcome to another Death Head Dice unboxing video. This time we're going to look at the Trollbloods Dozer and Spig Character War Heavy War Beast. This is uh, released from, I think, the summer. I've had this for a while. I just haven't had a chance to do anything with it. So why not open in front of all you fine folks? So as you can see, typical privateer box. Box sort of the side. Show on the side. Instructions for building it, which is always handy. Um, brief summary of the character, summary of the game. Just notice though that a lot of the box art has the same photo there and there. And well, it's different, a little bit different in there. So why don't we try getting a different photo if we can? Just because you know having different uh, pose would be a good idea. Especially since you've got that 3D thing on the website, you can t pull a, an image off of that. So just a suggestion. So, let's take a look and see what's inside the box. And there we go. So, as you and, and in the back is the card. So, we'll take a quick look at the card. So, make sure that's in focus. Dozer and Spig. A four Fury Heavy War Beast. And there you go. You can take a look at that. And then I'll just flip it over. He's got a bank shot Animus. Which adds plus two to AoE ranged attack rolls, which is handy. He's an affinity to Gunbjorn, which will make uh, maybe people actually play Gunbjorn a little bit more. And then all the other stuff here that you see. So, so we'll get into the actual model. So we'll open this up. Try to open up the right way here without everything spilling. So, as you can probably tell, this is a nice mix of the resin as well as pewter pieces. Uh, and this is the, the high-end resin, this is the stuff they use for the bigger pieces, and this isn't the same as you would see for, um, say, some, some of the um, the plastic stuff you're seeing, like from the two-player starter box. You've got um, Sorsha, and then you can even see the difference in the quality of the, uh, or the, the color. You can see the difference, so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this all out, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so I've laid out the entire kit, and you can see it is made up of Five, eight, uh, twelve, thirteen pieces. So thirteen pieces of goodness. So, um, as I mentioned before, it is a combination of the resin as well as the pewter. And the resin pieces, we'll take a look at them first. The the level of detail in this is fantastic. I I mean, not to gush, but I think this is by far the nicest kit I've seen um, from Privateer Press if for the trolls. And I haven't seen all the other ones, but. I think this by far is heads and heads and shoulders above all the other uh, other kits I've seen so far from the Troll Bloods. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's for me, it's very reminiscent of the of the Forge World quality of kit, if not even uh, even better than some of the stuff I've seen from them. So um, there is, and, and again, this kind of this kind of product with the the, the resin, you're going to expect that there is some mold lines along here. I don't know if I can get the camera in close enough to see that. But the um, there is some mold lines just right along that seam right there, um, but that's that's something you could easily clean up. And with this kind of model, you're definitely going to take the time to to do a really good job. I know I've left a few of the mold lines on some of my other stuff sort of sit because it wasn't a big deal. But this is such a uh, a presentation piece. You almost have to make sure you do is spend as much time. That's why I'm sort of a little scared to put a little bit of paint on it as well because I want to I want to make sure I do it justice. So. But overall, yeah, the, the molding on this was fantastic. The level of detail is fantastic. Um, looks like it would be fairly easy to put together as well. Pieces fit in fairly, uh, look like they've, they match really nicely. There's the hand, and then they've, for some pieces they've done a combination. So you've got the, the, the resin as well as the, the pewter pieces. So I guess it was a little bit more difficult to, to mold that hand folding over and get that out properly. So, but... Uh, Excellent detail on this one. A few air bubbles I did notice though on the, on the hand. There's one on the nail and there's a couple in some of the seams as well. But uh, again, a little bit of uh, gray stuff or green stuff, you can fill that in. Um, head, just typical Jack or War Beast. Doesn't look uh, anything, doesn't look anything outside of the norm. I think the real character comes from the body and the hands and the, uh, the way he looks there. So and there's the head with the teeth. And then he's got the bombard on the top with all the bags and, and such. And it looks really good. And then you've got your your pig on the back, or pygmy on the back with the... that. And it's nice the way the platform actually attaches. And there's a groove in the back and this just fits in right here. And then the pygmy will fit right on top. So, and again, pretty straightforward. It looks like it'll be a breeze to put together, I think. And, and again, I think just waiting to 
do the justice with the paint. So overall, gorgeous, gorgeous kit. So there's not much to, else to talk about this thing. It's just, it's very nice. I think it's the best way of putting it. So let's go straight into the review. And for that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to sort of put this together a little bit so we can see what it looks like together. So give me a sec and I'll be right back. Well, that didn't take too long now, did it? So it turns out this will be a quick video. So let's jump right into the review. And this is where we sort of quantify the uh, my opinion on the on the kit. So we break it into three categories, sculpt, material and the mold and then the options and posability. So we'll start off with the sculpt. Well, no surprise I'm getting this five out of five because this thing is just gorgeous. I, like I said, I, I don't think we've seen from Trolls as nice a kit as this. I mean, some could argue the Mountain King, but uh, I really like this one and I, I'm really excited to play this one. I know uh, there's some questions about in the community whether or not he's uh, feasible, but uh, he looks too good not to play. So so five out of five on the sculpt. So we're gonna go into the mold slash material. So this is where they look in the mold lines, the quality of the material itself. So this is their, this is Privateer's Press's sort of more high-end resin. Um, a lot of really good detail, minimal mold lines. I mean, there's a little bit of mold line there, uh, a few air bubbles, which with this kind of process, you can be expected. Now, because of that, I can't give it five out of five as much as I want to, but I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five, just because again, this, the amount of effort to clean this up will be minimal. And that means you can get to painting it that much sooner. And then last we have the option slash posability. Now, because this is a character, and typically in, in almost every miniature line I've seen, the characters don't have that much posability. So I don't think it's actually fair, because I mean, I've, I've voiced my opinion on the fact that Privateer Press stuff doesn't seem to have a lot of that, but for the character, I don't think you'd expect that. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to give a score on the options and posability, because I don't think it's really relevant for this. So if we look at this, uh, the overall score, which is the, in this case, is the sculpt of five and the mold and material of uh, four and a half, we're looking at a 95%, which this model really deserves. This is just, I can't, I don't mean to gush, but this is a, uh, a fantastic kit. So um, I'd like to get some feedback if anyone's actually played it. Um, comment below, because I know there's a number of people that have said they're a little underwhelmed by him, but I, I, I'm curious of the people that say that they're underwhelmed have actually played him. I know a lot of cases we look at the stack cards and sort of figure, okay, it doesn't look that good, but until you actually get some table time with them. Uh, I know for myself, I was putting together a list um, and and a couple times, and I, I wind up putting it with Gunbjorn, which was actually the model that got me into Troll Bloods in the first place. Um, it's uh, it's nice to see to be able to pull that guy out and actually maybe potentially play him as well, even though I know he's considered a, an underperforming caster. but. I'm to the point this year with my Year of the Trolls, I want to play everything I have and I want to see how they all play together and sort of form my own opinions. So comment below if you've had luck with uh, Dozer and Smig and if you've brought them with Gunbjorn and if you have any suggestions or pointers for uh, for the first time playing it. So so thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of these videos, just like and subscribe to the channel. We do have um, a Twitter feed and a Tumblr feed which I've, uh, this last couple weeks has been busy, so it hasn't been as active as normal, but I'm trying to spam both those as much as possible. And if you, I also have a website as well where I sort of summarize what we've done for the week as well, and I'm going to have longer articles coming out there shortly. Uh, and, and that's it. So comment below if you have any suggestions, recommendations, criticisms, etc. Thanks for watching, and we'll have some more videos for you soon.